Ancient DNA reveals the world's oldest family tree, according to University of Newcastle. Analysis of ancient DNA from one of the oldest preserved Neolithic tombs in Britain has revealed that most of the people buried there were from five continuous generations of a single extended family. By analyzing DNA extracted from the bones, the teeth of 35 individuals entombed in Hazelton North Long Cabin in the Cotswolds Severn region, Severn region, the research team was able to detect that 27 of them were close biological relatives. The group lived approximately 5,700 years ago. This is a recent article, December 22nd, 2021, on Science Daily. They were from an extended single family. By analyzing DNA extracted from the bones and teeth of 35 individuals at Hazelton North Long Cabin Cotswolds, the team was able to detect 27 of them were close biological relatives from the group approximately 5,700 years ago, around 3,700 3, to 3,600 BC, around 100 years after farming had been introduced to Britain. Published in Nature magazine, it's the first study to reveal in such detail how prehistoric families were structured, and the international team of archaeologists and geneticists say that the results prove provide new insight into kinship and burial practices in Neolithic times. The research team, which included archaeologists from Newcastle University, UK, and geneticists from the University of the Basque Country, University of Vienna, and Harvard University, show that most of those buried in the tomb were descendants from four women and had all had children with the same man. Can you imagine? The claim that Hazelton North included two L-shaped chambered areas which were located north and south of the main spine of the linear structure. After they had died, individuals were buried inside these two chambered areas and the research findings indicate that men were generally buried with their father and brothers, suggesting that the descent was patrilineal, with later generations buried in the tomb connected to the first generation entirely through male relatives. I finally support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box. Now, while two of the daughters of the lineage who died in childhood were buried in the tomb, the complete absence of adult daughters suggests that their remains were placed either in the tombs of male partners with whom they had children or elsewhere. Although the right to use a tomb ran through Petri Neil, uh, Petriel Neil ties, the choice of whether individuals were buried in the north or south chambered area initially depended on the first generation women from whom they descended, suggesting that these first generation women were socially significant in the memories of their community. There are also indications that stepsons, quote unquote, were adopted into the lineage, the researchers say, males whose mother was buried in the tomb but not their biological father, and whose mother had also had children with a male from the patriline. And additionally, the team found no evidence that another eight individuals were biological relatives of those in the family tree, which might further suggest that biological relatedness was not the only criterion for inclusion. However, three of these were women, and it's possible that they could have had a partner in the tomb, but either did not have any children or had daughters who reached adulthood and left the community, so are absent from this tomb. Dr. Chris Fowler of Newcastle University, the first author and lead archaeologist of the study, said, this study gives us an unprecedented insight into kinship in the Neolithic community. The tomb at Hazelton North has two separate chambered areas, one accessed via the northern entrance and the other from the southern entrance. And just one extraordinary finding is that initially each of the two halves of the tomb were used to place the remains of the dead from one of the two branches of the same family. 
This is of wider importance because it suggests that the architectural layout of other Neolithic tombs might tell us about how kinship operated in those tombs. Anigo Alalde of University of Basque Country and Iker Basque, the lead geneticist, geneticist from the study and co-author first uh, author said, the excellent DNA preservation at the tomb and the use of the latest technologies in ancient DNA recovery and analysis allowed us to uncover the oldest family tree ever reconstructed and analyze it to understand something profound about the social structure of these ancient groups. David Reich at Harvard University, whose laboratory led the ancient DNA generation, added, this study reflects what I think is the future of ancient DNA, one in which archaeologists are able to apply ancient DNA analysis at sufficiently high resolution to address the questions that truly matter to archaeologists. Ron Pinhasi, University of Vienna, said, it was difficult to imagine just a few years ago that we would even know, ever know about Neolithic kinship structure. But this is just the beginning, and no doubt there is a lot more to be discovered from other sites in Britain, Atlantic, France, and other regions. The project was an international collaboration between archaeologists from University of Newcastle, York, Exeter, and Central Lancashire, and geneticists at the University of Vienna, University of the Basque Country, and Harvard University, Corinium Museum, Sir in Chester provided permission to sample the remains of their collection, their collection. And the work received primary funding from a Ramon E. Cajal grant from the Ministry of um, Spain government, Iker Basque, Basque Foundation of Science, the US National Institutes of Health, and John Templeton Foundation, a private gift from Jean Francois Klin, the Allen Discovery Center Program a Paul G. Allen Frontiers Group advisory program of the Paul G. Allen Family Foundation and the Howard Hughes Medical Institute. This is from Newcastle University on Science Daily. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support.